Well, I suppose you've heard the news that President Joe Biden landed in the presidential helicopter on the grounds of Windsor Castle with his wonderful climate change meeting with King Charles III. So things are stampeding along with the king and millions at his disposal, perhaps billions, implement his climate change agenda. Net zero. And now they're having meetings on how we can accomplish their climate change agenda. And of course, who else would be there but Mr. Heinz Ketchup himself, John Kerry. WTOP News reports Biden and King Charles III zero in, no pun intended, on generational challenge of climate change. Windsor, England. President Joe Biden and King Charles III, two leaders who waited decades to reach the pinnacle of their careers, used their first meeting in these roles today to zero in on the generational challenge of climate change, prodding private companies to do more to bolster clean energy in developing countries. The meticulously choreographed gathering at Windsor Castle injected substance into the type of encounter between president and monarch that historically has been more about ceremony. After the arrival formalities, Biden and Charles participated in a climate-focused roundtable with officials from the financial and philanthropic sectors. So why would they be including the financial thing in there? Because they're trying to increase the billions at his disposal to implement these, uh, what they called climate cash, and penalties for not being 
compliant. John Kerry, the U.S. envoy on climate, also attended, of course. The 70-year-old Charles, who was crowned in May, has long fought to protect wildlife and battle climate change. Biden, for his part, identified climate change as one of the four crises he was determined to confront as president. He signed a sweeping legislative package last year that includes nearly $375 billion in climate-related incentives. Biden, 80, last had formal talks with Charles, then Prince, at the COP26 UN Climate Summit in Glasgow, Scotland in November of 2021. The U.S. President also attended the state funeral of Charles' mother, Queen Elizabeth II, in September, as well as a reception for heads of state at Buckingham Palace the night before the service. Biden did not attend Charles' coronation, sending First Lady Jill Biden instead. Jake Sullivan, the White House National Security Advisor, said the President has huge respect for the King and his commitment on the climate issue in particular. He said Charles has been a clarion voice on climate and someone who has mobilized action and effort. Biden and Charles made sure to show off their still developing friendship and warmth during the ceremonial arrival at Windsor Castle outside London. After they shook hands, Biden put his hand on Charles's arm, then on the King's back as they approached a viewing platform to inspect an honor guard and they appeared relaxed and cordial, a contrast to more formal encounters between past U.S. presidents and British royalty. You know, there is a certain protocol and I don't believe, like when Queen Elizabeth was here, I don't believe you're supposed to uh, touch the monarch, you know, without permission from the monarch. But the views of the late Queen Elizabeth II on politics and political issues were a closely guarded secret, and her meetings with world leaders were almost entirely ceremonial. Charles spent his decades as heir to the throne expressing opinions on issues from architecture to the environment and has continued to take a keen interest in climate change now that he is king. However, neither he nor Biden spoke publicly at Windsor Castle. Biden's royal visit was paired with his sixth meeting with British Prime Minister since Rishi Sunak took office. The two discussed a range of global issues, including the war in Ukraine. So you have to realize this, that back in June, it was reported that Biden announces $600 million in climate investments as the 2024 campaign revs up. And this was reported from Palo Alto, California, and it said President Joe Biden was ramping up his re-election effort with four fundraisers in the San Francisco area as his campaign builds up to its coffers and lays strategic foundations for 2024. Not all of Biden's time Monday and Tuesday, back in June, in San Francisco was devoted to the campaign. On that Monday, he went with Newsom and other officials to the Lucy Evans Balins Natural Interpretive Center and Preserve in Palo Alto. He, all, he toured the coastal wetlands area and announced $600 million for projects to address climate change. These wetlands act as a critical buffer between the rising tides and the communities at risk, said Biden, calling the preserve a success story in ongoing efforts to contain the damage from climate change. In the back half of June, Biden's campaign will have more than 20 fundraisers involving him, Vice President Kamala Harris, First Lady Jill Biden, and Second Gentleman Douglas Emhoff, according to a person involved in Biden's travel plans, who insisted on 
anonymity to discuss the schedule. More than half of the fundraisers are with the Democratic president, who arrived in California and was greeted by Governor Gavin Newsom. Biden will also be traveling to New York, Maryland, and Illinois. The president hit the themes of his campaign at a Friday fundraising event in Connecticut, saying his goal is to do more to tell voters about his legislative accomplishments in infrastructure, computer chip production, and programs for responding to climate change, among other policies. So now he's suddenly meeting with the king of climate change, um, the one who got his carbon footprint down to net zero and thinks everyone else should do this. And I just can't believe how this is developing. You know, especially when I revealed what the um, mark of the beast is, being the king's royal cipher, and how I came to that conclusion. Uh, it's totally stunning and laid out in another video I did and it's interesting because one of the headlines stated Biden to tap tech climate executives in California fundraising trip well okay let's put the pieces of the puzzle together so now we had the UK the Parliament of UK and King Charles the third head of king of the climate change make a seven-year agreement with Israel for all of these exact th same things. Their seven-year agreement includes tech and trade and climate change agenda and gender identity. Um, among other things, they want to have people from the UK go to Israel and vice versa so that they can work to build these companies together that will enforce the climate laws and the climate taxes on the citizens and you know uh, removing anybody's bank account so that you cannot buy and sell because you won't even be allowed to have a bank account at their bank unless you have the king's royal cipher mark the mark of the beast is the mark of the king and it's coming and I told you that my dream is what revealed that to me about the word cipher means zero. And this is what the 666 of carbon is, of the carbon footprint. So that is how I have been able to calculate the number of the beast, which is a king. And this was an original dream it was nobody else's idea or thought. So if you see it showing up somewhere else without acknowledgement that it came from me, please say something or do something about it because this is a serious matter and I take my channel and my work seriously for the Lord. And um, it's no laughing matter and it truly was a divine revelation from the dream that I had. And that dream is laid out in a specific video about the King's Royal Cipher being the mark of the beast. So this is how I calculated it. So isn't it interesting that it is the Bank of England that has shut down people's bank accounts because they will not comply to the woke agenda and it will be the same for the climate change challenges that are coming because years and years ago, back in the 90s, I remember Southwest Radio Church did a program on how these climate change people planned to put this world tax in place and make people pay it. It's something that they're making up and creating to bilk millions out of the citizens of the world. And this is what John Kerry does, and this is what his agenda is. And, you know, like I said, if I were you, I would stop buying anything with the name Heinz on it. 
Heinz ketchup, Heinz pickle relish, you know, Heinz mustard. Um, there's plenty of other brands that are just as good, if not superior. I personally like Hunt's tomato ketchup. And, you know, I don't think we should fund these billionaires that are so into their greed that they think that they're above the law. You know, one minute we see that there's articles of impeachment for Joe Biden laid out. And the next thing we see is, oh, they found this Coke in the White House. The next thing we see is the president meeting at Windsor Castle with King Charles III. So my question is, is some of that money drug money? Where they're getting billions? And they've got these whacked out crazy ideas that they want to implement on the people that are not as wealthy as themselves. You know, we have to just constantly be praying that God will intervene on our behalf and just block their road, block their path to achieving these goals. Because what they're doing actually... Uh, takes more energy and more minerals and more slave labor to put in place than it would if they just left everything the way it was and left it alone. So um, this this whole thing with King Charles III is obviously progressing and stampeding. Now you've got the connection of Joe Biden talking the tech. Uh, going to the tech companies in California to get billions from them. And then you've got Israel with their new UK-Israel tech and trade agreement. And then King Charles, what do you think he's going to do next? King Charles III is going to go to Israel. And he's going to oversee the implementation of some of these climate change businesses that will be new upstarts that will bring in billions of dollars and it will all be funded on the backs of the taxpayers and the poor and the middle class and of course, the billionaire elites will implement anything they want because they think they're above the law. So, putting two and two together, we have to have Joe Biden go there first with the tech and climate change and all the funding and billions he raised over in California and New York and Vermont. Now he goes over to the king. And what do you think he's going to do with that billions? He's going to give it to the king at his disposal. He'll be able to do exactly what he said at the WEF. When he has billions at his disposal, he'll be able to implement his agenda. So here we go. It's off to the races. The horses are taken off out of the gate. And it's a evil Kentucky Derby that's heading out. I love the Kentucky Derby, but I'm just saying these are the horses that are riding, implementing the end time agenda, and the time of the tribulation is coming quickly. Like, subscribe, and share. Please support my channel. Thank you for your words of kindness and blessing. I appreciate it. If you want to donate something, the best way is paypal.me uh, forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O -O -O, or Kimberly K. Ballard, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado, C-O, 80544. And please, I have the most incredible miracles that have taken place that I wrote about in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, which will not deceive you into following after an earthly king, but will really reveal to you the truth about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Have a blessed day. Keep praying. 
keep praying against all of this insanity of these people that have this wicked agenda and um, pray for God's will to be done and pray for Jesus to appear and take us to be in the glory cloud where we can be with our King forever in the new Garden of Eden-like state. Hallelujah. God bless. I'll see you later.